Some U of L researchers have landed a grant from the NIH to investigate how the environment influences the health of children. What we don't know and sometimes can't see can hurt our kids. Dr. Janice Sullivan is the chief and medical director of the COSAIR Charities Pediatric Research Unit at U of L, and Sarah Watson is an assistant pediatrics professor also at U of L. So, Janice and Sarah, thanks for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Thank you for inviting us. All right. Thank well, tell us a little bit about this uh, grant you landed along with, uh, I guess, several other folks across the United States. You're you're a, you're part of it, right? What what do you What's the grant? What are you going to do? So we are one of 17 sites that was selected across the United States as one of the Idea State grants. And we are going to be working with local physicians, community leaders, et cetera, to try and identify areas that may impact children's health in the future. All right, that's Dr. Janice Sullivan, by the way. Sarah, what, what are some of the things that you're looking at? I mean, when we talk about children's health and environmental hazards or environmental problems that, that affect their health. What are we talking about? Are we talking about air, water? What are some of the things we're talking about? Well, a little bit of all of it. There are four main focus areas for this um, grant, and we're going to look at uh, things that affect breathing and um, disorders in kids, including asthma and even smaller children. We're going to look at prematurity and some issues with um, babies who are born to mothers addicted with to drugs. Uh, we're also going to look at obesity and factors that are influencing that in ways to hopefully impact that, um, and also neurodevelopmental outcomes. See, when I, when I think of environmental stuff, I think about what's in the air, what's in the water, how's that going to affect my kid? But you're talking about some other factors, right? Uh, right. So. Maybe diet, it may be exercise, it could be, just like she mentioned, mother, children, infants born to mothers addicted to narcotics. And we know that there's been an exponential increase in that in Kentucky um, over the last 10 years. Also, in looking at neurodevelopmental outcomes, we know that the incidence of autism in Kentucky has markedly increased, and so trying to identify what those factors may be. So there's a lot of different things that may impact the health of children. Right, and there are things in Kentucky where uh, Kentucky kids have a higher rate of various things. Um, you know, we know about the parents having lung cancer and those kinds of heart disease, those kinds of things because of our health, and we're just not healthy in Kentucky, but the kids are also at higher rates. I think you mentioned autism. I think our autism rates are a little bit higher. Uh, asthma rates, I believe, are a little bit higher, correct? Correct. So aren't there, so aren't there uh, little slivers of Kentucky health with their ki involving kids that are worse than the national average? Are you going to be looking at those things to see why it's bad here with the kids here? We are, and I think one of the opportunities with this grant are collaboration with people from other states. And so you can look at what's different about your state, but also try and identify factors that impact development and disease. So I think that's an exciting part of this grant. One of the other faculty members at the University of Louisville, Michelle Stevenson, was part of a, another group that went in, because the IDEA grant is under a big umbrella called the ECHO grants. And so there were some sub-awards that went in, and she has been doing some work looking at RSV, which is a virus that babies get. What, it, what is it? What, I it's don't a know respiratory RSV. syncytial virus. Okay. And so when you and I get it, we just end up with a cold. Okay. But when little babies get it, they can get very sick and sometimes die from that disease. And so we've been following children with that disease for a long time. So part of this grant they put in to continue to follow those children until they're up to six years of age that have been previously enrolled in the study. And to look at the development of asthma, does having that virus as an infant impact their risk of having asthma later on? So I got you. We're talking with Dr. Janice Sullivan at the University of Louisville and Sarah Watson, who's an assistant pediatrics professor at U of L. We're talking about a grant that they recently received from the NIH to look at environmental factors and the, the health of children and how that goes on and, and affects them in their adulthood. Sarah, what are some of the things that uh, that doctors see in Kentucky, perhaps that that you're going to look at in this study that it may be different or you know, that they're saying, huh, they're scratching their heads saying, well, why, why does this kid have this, but this kid doesn't? Is that, what are some of the things that they're looking at? So as 
you mentioned there are higher rates of various illnesses in Kentucky, and one of them is obesity um, that we're seeing a lot more of in Kentucky, which certainly puts our kids at a higher risk for developing type 2 diabetes and other complications. So this grant is going to help us build a network throughout the state to really involve some of the kids that live in more rural areas that aren't near where we're physically located to allow them to participate in research and really get us to the opportunities to answer these questions. That's one of the things that's more unique about Kentucky than some of the other um, states that have a much larger urban population. So is this a rural health grant? Yes, it really is. And I think it's exciting because we are collaborating with the uh, Commonwealth Institute of Kentucky, which is part of the School of Public Health and they will be helping us reach out to local communities because we want on our advisory board for our grant we are going to involve children and parents and community leaders to kind of help us involve the rural people in Kentucky the underserved population in Kentucky to allow them to be part of this initiative as it moves forward is there anything in the air or the water in Kentucky that's any different from it is any anywhere else or in the Ohio Valley for that matter you talked about asthma I guess and I, my first thought was well they live in the Ohio Valley of course they're gonna have uh, more respiratory problems is there anything different in Kentucky and southern Indiana than there is in the rest of the country so as far as pollutants and things like that I don't know the answer specifically we do have a much higher rate of cigarette smoking mm -hmm. and therefore smoke exposure for our children Secondhand um, smoke. correct and also we have higher rates of uh, addiction uh, and infants born to mothers uh, with addiction so those are a couple of, of specific things and we might be able to get at some of the other answers I think one of the aspects of this is looking at pollutants in the air and asthma, et cetera. And we know now that there are inhalers and things that have GPS on them, basically. So you can identify when a patient uses those inhalers, et cetera, and you can look at air quality and things like that. And there are already people that are working on that. And how much of that will be part of this grant, we will learn when we go to our meeting in Washington, D.C. in the next couple of weeks to kind of meet with all the other groups that are involved so we have a better groundwork on what we're going to focus on. I read the news release that came out about your grant, and uh, one thing that I found interesting was that you're looking at factors of not just newborn babies, but in the womb, then newborns, and then up to, you're talking infants here. So you're talking about a very... Uh, <laughs> Not early child, but early, 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 early childhood and the impacts that environmental factors can have, aren't you? Correct. Is that part of it? Is that a big part of it? That is part of it. And then some of the other outcomes that are affect older children will include those age groups as well. Um, but there is, uh, there is that uh, piece about newborns for sure. Out of this grant, what do you hope that parents will learn? And what do you hope that doctors will learn? That's a two-part question. Let's start with parents first. What do you hope that parents might be able to learn from the research and what you learned from out of this grant? I think it's important for parents to gain an understanding of how research is conducted and what role they can have because I think it's very important if you don't have buy-in from parents and from the children to participate in research and they don't appreciate the potential benefit that you lose something. And so I think them being able to contribute, even to study design, how is this study going to be done? I think parents will have a vested interest in that. And as a result, I think as when the results of the studies come out, I think parents can be involved in help sharing that information. And they may have a better understanding of how to reach other people and impact long-term outcome. Right. Sarah, how about uh, doctor? Well, go with parents first, and then doctors. What do you think that you hope they learn? Well, I think she answered the parent question she very did. well. She did. So as far as what I hope doctors learn, I really hope that we learn better how to work with the families and the um, individuals in these communities to, number one, address their concerns and to ask the questions that will have the greatest impact on their health um, and also to take into account some of the barriers that they might have to being willing to or being physically able to participate in research and really change how we are doing our jobs to better serve them. Gotcha. Very good. All right, Janice Sullivan, Sarah Watson, congratulations on the NIH grant, and we hope to hear more about this in the future, about what you find uh, in your research.